Good evening. Would you please stand and join together in singing Be Thou My Vision, which is found on the yellow music sheets. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word. And with that spiritual insight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Later in the Mass, we'll be praying the Novena Prayer. The Novena Prayer booklet can be found at the gifts table or uh, at the back of church as well. Tonight's readings may be found in the Red Gather Hymnal, uh, number 909. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abraham outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credit it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other. But the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, 
there appeared a smoking firepot and a flaming torch which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things 
into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord. The word of the... be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son, listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus appears in dazzling white. I'd like to talk about the dazzling white in terms of the discipline to which the disciples are called in order to follow Jesus, the discipline to which we're all called, but the darkness that still can happen even though we follow the discipline, and then the devotion that we are called to, and Jesus' devotion to us. Jesus is anticipating this devotion by showing himself in dazzling white as the Savior to those who may not have recognized him fully as the Savior yet. Do you like change? Do you like change? It is a truth nearly universally accepted that people do not like change. This is the gospel message today, the transfiguration. It is also the daylight savings time message. It is perhaps our own experience in life that things change or things are changing. We say or sing the song, the times they are changing to describe upheaval, uncertainty, and things not only are uncertain for many of us, but also for the gospel disciples this Sunday. 
Times have been uncertain for many of us. Right now, things may not feel, we may not feel ready for the time change or for the times to change. And with tanks in Ukraine, civilians dying in Ukraine, we may feel we are at the, the very early hour, or as they say in the military, at O oh dark 30 or zero dark 30 of a new war and battle. For all of us, prayer and fasting, some intentional sacrifice helps us to recognize that while times change, we are synchronizing ourselves, not with meal times or with the next time we eat, but with God's clock and, our, and God's time by our own choices of prayer and fasting during the 40 days of Lent. We are called to pray and fast as part of our Christian life. Our Catholic life, and, and not only to do so for those who have died or were injured in Ukraine, but also for our own U.S. administration, for NATO countries, for Russian and Ukrainian leaders, that whether they acknowledge it or not, all these leaders need the light of the Holy Spirit at this critical moment. And your fasting and prayer is important, and your fasting and prayer are personal for others. Abstaining from certain consumptions of media or something is a way we can do to synchronize ourselves with our environment. Fasting, when we're fasting or giving up something that we like, it may seem that we're out of sync with our environment, but we're really getting into sync with our environment and, and helping us to pure ourselves, purify ourselves for a greater good. On Friday morning, two days ago, I set the clock ahead in church here one hour ahead. It is now 6.45 in church on the clock. More and more clocks, now these days, very few clocks or fewer and fewer clocks need to be manually reset. They automatically set themselves. However, do you automatically reset? Do I automatically reset? I often find I am catching up to the time chains. I don't reset myself. And isn't there always that one pesky little clock, that one annoying little clock or two that we forget to reset and we notice three weeks from now or two months from now that it still has not been set one hour ahead. Years ago, a friend told me that she and her family would set their clocks ahead like a week in advance. They would set their clocks ahead before the weekend of daily late savings time. This seems so practical because they were always one hour ahead of everybody else. It reminded me that I should be really plan myself to be more punctual, to punctual, even to pronounce the word punctual correctly, to be more punctual, to be on time, not to make other people wait. Should I set my clocks ahead, all my clocks ahead one hour at all times? That might not work. It might be a bit too extreme. There is a time change in the gospel. This is the gospel about looking ahead and considering a time change. For the disciples, where they knew it, whether they knew it or not on the mountain, the times they are changing, and it's not the breeze that it's what's blowing in the wind is not the breeze on the mountain, but what's blowing in the wind is the Holy Spirit is moving. It is perhaps some evidence of our fallen human nature that we need daylight savings time in order to coordinate ourselves with daylight. I thought until recently that daylight savings time was something that was all about energy savings, using less natural light, le sorry, using less electric light and more natural light, but actually daylight savings time was developed simply to ensure that the daylight of the early morning was not lost so that we could transfer the daylight that we would normally get, that would normally happen when we're either asleep or that we haven't left the house yet because we're getting ready for work or school or the day, and to move that into the later part of the day. In other words, we change the clock so that we can save the daylight. I also read that it's a fallacy. It is false to think that farmers and agricultural people like daylight savings time. They don't like daylight savings time because they're already up early in the morning. They're up much earlier than you and me. They're up one or three hours ahead of us. So they don't like losing the daylight in the morning. They favor the light of the early morning. The gospel reading about the transfiguration is about a move from darkness to light. And I'd like to touch on this in terms of the discipline of the disciples, the darkness of the disciples, and the devotion of the disciples. First, the discipline. The disciples are not always very disciplined. I am also lacking in discipline many times. 
It requires discipline for the disciples to get up the mountain. And it requires discipline for you and for me to do anything of value, to make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for our loved ones. To wake up at zero dark 30 in the middle of the night for a child or for someone in need. Or to do anything ahead of time for somebody in need. That's the discipline. There is darkness for the disciples as well. In the gospel, there's darkness for Peter, James, and John. While a certain discipline got them up the mountain, what happens when they get up to the top of the mountain? They fall asleep. Did they perhaps lose an hour of sleep the night before? Is that why they're falling asleep now? In any case, they fall asleep, and this is not the last time the disciples will fall asleep while Jesus is praying. The same thing happens in the Garden of Gethsemane. The times they are changing for the disciples, and the message here is that the passion, the road to Jerusalem is starting from this mountain. That's what we read in the Gospel today. Jesus appears in his glory to speak of his exodus as he was going to, that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Jesus is going to Jerusalem from this mountain. But he's showing his disciples that he is the transfigured in dazzling white, that he is truly the Son of God. And during these dark days ahead of Good Friday and his arrest, they are to remember this transfiguration, that he is really their savior. They're reminded to be devoted to him, to listen to him, as we read, in, as we hear in God's voice in the gospel. Devotion, listening. What is a measure of devotion? Devotion is often measured these days by what we view or what we listen to or what we like. Recently, I was going to forward a video that I saw on YouTube about communication and speaking. I thought it was a very good video. And the, I recalled the video was very popular. It was informative to me, and I noticed that the video had over 6 million views. So s at least 6 million other people thought it was important too. So I thought, well, six million people thought it was important. It must be important. Yes, I can be that superficial in judging something. Is, the measure, is this the measure of my devotion, what six million other people are doing? The measure of devotion is now in the transfiguration just for three people, Peter, John, and James, who are disciplined enough to climb up the mountain, but they're still in the darkness enough to fall asleep, but they are learning about the devotion of Jesus who will die for them for you and for me. So we are called to measure our devotion by what we can do personally, perhaps in small ways, to make certain small fasts, certain small sacrifices. But even this gives us a certain stability and security of God in our lives. We also remind us, we are remembering that Jesus devotes himself to us. He gives us his presence in the Holy Eucharist, even if we are not fully aware. We are called to be awake to his reality, to remember that we are called each day to rise and shine. The Nicene Creed, our profession of faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us look to our Savior, Jesus Christ, and pray. That the church may be seen more clearly as a sign of God's mercy for us in times of both sorrow and joy, we pray. For the intercession of Our Lady of Lourdes, for healing and strength for all those who suffer in illness, we pray. For the people of Ukraine, may God, author and lover of peace, banish violence from our midst, give comfort to the afflicted, and grant salvation to the deceased, we pray. For our beloved deceased, Frank Noborini, Philip Lachance, Giuseppe Chirico, Vincenzo Russo, and for all whom we remember in our parish book of life, we pray. For the intention of this Mass, for a special intention entrusted to God, for James Cham, we pray. In a moment, we'll be praying our Novena prayer from the Purple Booklets. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in the silence of our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. There will be two collections which we'll take up after the Novena Prayer. The second collection is for the Archdiocesan Assessment Collection. There are also envelopes in church by the gifts table for a collection for Catholic Relief Services for Ukraine, for CRS Ukraine. There are envelopes in church and a basket by the gifts table as well. Thank you for your generosity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O glorious Saint Joseph, faithful follower of Jesus Christ, to you we raise our hearts and hands to implore your powerful intercession in obtaining from the benign heart of Jesus all the helps and graces necessary for our spiritual and temporal welfare, particularly the grace of a happy death and the special favor we now request. O guardian of the word incarnate, we feel animated with confidence that your prayers on our behalf will be graciously heard before the throne of God. Amen. We'll now take our collection, our collection and our second collection. Please join in singing Holy Patron be saluting.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the t his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Your contribution envelopes that you use have been delayed in being delivered to you due to a printing problem. Sorry for the inconvenience. We hope that they will be delivered by March 25th. In the interim, you may use any envelope you wish with your name on it. Um, and uh, thank you for your patience. Regarding the St. Joseph Novena, the Novena has started and it will continue tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. And Sunday evening through Friday, this coming Friday evening at 7 p.m., there will be a Mass for the Vigil of St. Joseph on Friday evening, March 18th, as well as a Mass on Saturday morning, March 19th at 8.30 in the morning. We will have a special Take out St. Joseph's table provided by the Gaeta family and F&B Catering on Thursday and Friday. There are also St. Joseph's Novena envelopes in, in church. Thank you for your contribution. The St. Patrick's Day Parade is in West, in West Orange. It's coming up Main Street tomorrow. So just a reminder, there's no 11.30 a.m. Mass tomorrow morning. And um, please set your clocks ahead one hour. Spring ahead one hour tonight. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Please join in singing, I want Jesus to walk with me. Mm -hmm. 